anxious and afraid to be um, when they come to puberty. Okay. So one thing that I get in all these workshops that I've run is parents come to me and say, well, if you talk to children about sex, it'll encourage them to have sex. Well, that's absolutely not true. In fact, the opposite is true. That actually as parents, if you provide accurate information and share your values, then children are far more likely to delay when they st first ha start having sex. And that it's more likely that they're going to uh, use protection and use safe sex. So the opposite is true. Talking to your children about these uh, very, very important topics actually will help them make sensible choices later on in life. Now, young children are not interested in sex because they want to try it. They're just curious. They're curious about their bodies as they should be, about others. But if you make it a taboo, if you make it a secret, shh, don't talk about that. You're too young to talk about that. Don't look at that, turn away. Then they realize that this is something that they shouldn't talk about that it's something that's embarrassing. And um, that would actually not be a good way of starting their journey of sexuality um, and puberty. So it's really important that, um, you know, if you don't talk to children about sex, they might think that it's scary. It actually might impact how they feel about sex for the rest of their lives. So giving positive information is very important. How can you make it easier? Well, first is, if they ask a question from you, don't make them feel embarrassed. Don't say things like, we'll talk about it when you're older. The way I see it, if a child is old enough to ask you a question, then that child certainly deserves an answer back then. Okay, and you need to be truthful. Stories about storks and birds and bees, they just confuse children. Um, it's not correct, it's not scientific, and it's not right, to be honest. So the three messages I want you to take from this workshop are that you need to look for teachable moments, be an askable parent, and be honest. And I'm gonna go through each of these and then we'll have questions at the end. So what are teachable moments? Teachable moments are moments all around you that you can use to teach your child. It could be when you see a pregnant woman on the TV, if you're watching um, an advertisement on sanitary pads, watching somebody making love in a film, rather than turning the channel over, changing the subject, saying, don't look at that, talk about it. You know, if you see, a, say, a tampon advert, you could say, oh, yes, you know, that's the brand that I use. It's just making conversation, okay? And that means your child knows that these are topics that are not taboo, that you're happy to talk about. It's, you can start with teachable moments from a very young age. Bath and shower time with young children is a great time to talk about anatomy. You know, we talk about nose and eyes and shoulders and fingers, but the moment we talk about um, their anatomy in terms of their penis or their vulva or the vagina, we start making silly, silly names for them. And it's so important that you talk to your children. Oh, look, I'm just gonna wash your penis. I'm just gonna wash your bottom. You know, I just use that as normal. That, that is part of a teachable moment. If you see a baby, a newborn baby being born, you might, they might ask you questions or you might say, do you know how the, the baby was born? Just make it teachable. You could say, oh, oh that lady's got a big tummy uh, because she's got a beautiful baby growing inside her, in her womb. Um, sometimes you might catch your child playing doctor with a friend and again, you know, com completely normal. Don't embarrass them but talk to them about what they were doing. I remember when our children were young, we had tortoises and these tortoises were constantly having sex, very, very loud sex. Um, and, you know, obviously our 
friends were like, oh, uh, 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 my children were like, oh, they're giving each other piggyback rides. And so, you know, good teachable moment. I said, well, actually uh, what they're doing is they're making babies. And sure enough, later on, you know, they, they, lay, they laid eggs. But whenever we had visitors coming in, our children, you know, would say, oh, they're just making babies. And then you could also add in, uh, it's called mating. So they are mating. And, you know, if the child is, even if they're three or four, that's a really good teachable moment. Um, again, watching uh, TV, watching news, when your children are older, all of these are teachable moments. Now, it's not enough to use teachable moments. You need to be an askable parent as well. An askable parent is a parent that we all strive to be, somebody that can be approached for information and guidance. Um, and it's so important to be an askable parent, not only in this context, but in all contexts. And the first thing is to be non-judgmental. Now that's really hard to do, but for example, say you're watching a homosexual uh, couple on TV, you know, whatever you feel your personal ideas are, if you sort of say, oh, look at them, you know, that's not right, that's a sin that is being judgmental and you are going to jeopardize that relationship with your child because firstly you're raising them up to be homophobic which is completely unacceptable and secondly what if they turn out to be gay you know are you then going to ostracize them as well your children need to know that whatever they choose to be when they're grown up whether gay or straight or non-binary or transgender, it doesn't matter that you will accept them. So it's so important not to be judgmental in your day-to-day -day conversations with people in with what you see. And if you are approachable, that means your ch child will understand that you can, they can talk to you about anything. So you need to be able to listen to a child and answer questions accurately as well. But you need to know at what age they are able to understand. We'll go on to that a little bit later on. An askable parent also needs to have a sense of humor, okay? Because, you know, sexuality, sex, facts of life, part of life, we all make mistakes, we all get things wrong, and some of it is funny. So that is very, very important. We share feelings of your own sexuality is really valuable. Talk to them about what it was like for you when you were growing up, when you had, uh, when you went through puberty, how you learned about sex. Um, and it also encourages your child to ask information if you're an askable parent. You also need to be willing to answer questions again and again and again, especially from young children. They will ask you, the same question and it's important not to say look you know the answer already because that's the way children process information and they want to know if it's the same answer so just like you read the same bedtime story books hundreds of times just continue to answer them right so how much do you tell well that depends on your child's age depends on their maturity depends on their previous knowledge and also your own values and your own comfort levels, okay? So really, I can't tell you how much to tell. You need to judge that for yourself, for your child. Some ways that you can help, first of all, is if your child asks a question, is reward them, okay? Not say, why are you asking that? Oh, don't talk to, don't use language like that. Talk to me when you're older about that, not now. It doesn't work. I mean, even if they were have a swear word, for example, they use a four letter word, you know, rather than ostracize them, you can say, um, do you know what that word actually means? And that's not a word that we use in this house. Okay, so it's really important. But also when you are when your children ask questions, you could say something like, I'm glad you've asked that question. Oh, that's an interesting question. For example, one of my children asked me, you know, uh, what's an orgasm? And so then I had to sort of say, oh, that's an interesting word. Where did you hear that? And when they told me, I would explain. I said, well, that is 
the name of some a really, really special feeling that people get when they have sex. So it's very brief to the point and matter of fact. Sometimes your children can be quite shy. So it's really important to try and initiate the conversation, okay? Because sometimes you may see, think, um, you know, a child, say you're in the supermarket and they're just looking at the condoms uh, and they're looking away and not saying anything. And that might be a good opportunity to say, oh, do you know what those are? You know, obviously not when they're a toddler, this would be when they are a bit older, but again, you're initiating the conversation and they'll be like, oh, no, I don't. Or it might be um, a magazine where there's a woman, you know, and you can see her breasts. And again, you could say, oh, you know, that, that woman's talk about the anatomy, especially with, with boys at that point to say that actually it's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's also okay not to have an answer, especially this day and age, you know, there's so much of new things happening. They ask you a question, you can say, actually, I'm sorry, but I don't know the answer to that. You could find out, or you could say, we can find out together. And that's important as well, that they know that you don't know everything. And you know what? It's also okay to feel uncomfortable and it's okay to acknowledge it. So you could say, look, my parents never spoke to me about these things. Um, so it makes me uncomfortable, but I want to talk to you about it because it's really important. So acknowledging how you feel, but also telling them that it's important for you to talk to them about it. So examples of teachable moments, I'll give you one of mine. When I was, when my children were, boys were six and eight, I think we were at a supermarket and I was looking at the tea on one side of the aisle and behind me there were lots of pads, sanit sanitary products and the boys were there looking at each other talking about the sanitary products and one was like oh do you know what these are and the other's like oh yeah that's for grown-ups, um, they're grown-up nappies and I thought right so I could either just ignore this and walk away or I could sort of say, well, actually, and explain to them, which is what I did. So in the middle of the supermarket, I'm like, well, actually, those are called pads. And once a month, lots of adult women, uh, especially between the ages of maybe 12 till about 50, they have what's called a period where the little bit of blood comes from their vagina onto uh, their panties. So you have this pad to catch that, um, you know, and obviously this conversation has taken place because they understand the words vagina, they understand vulva, they understand penis because you've had these conversations before, um, you know, and obviously it's a bit disgusting for the boys and that's fine as well. And they're going to say, you know, oh my gosh, that's gross. And you say, well, that's okay. That's, it's gross for you, but it's important that you know. It's also important. Uh, hold on, I've just been unmuted again. Right, so listen to your child, find out what they know about the subject. So you could say, oh, yeah, those sanitary pads, do you know what they're for? Um, it could be that your child might come to you and say, um, what, what is gay? And you might say, oh, that's an interesting question. What do you think? Do you know what it means? And it could be that somebody has, uh, you know, been nasty to them and called them uh, derogatory terms. You just, I don't understand what the question is, what's behind the child's question. So it's not just about directly answering the question, but also wondering what concerns that they may have. Now, facts are not just enough because you can get facts from a textbook. Family values are important. It's so important that you teach your children about consent, about consenting adults, um, uh, about respecting other people, respecting whether uh, different sexualities, whether they're homosexual, bisexual, transgender. It's so important that at this 
level, you teach people that you need to accept everybody. Everybody is different. Nobody's the same. People do different things and that is all fine. And it's also important to say that their body belongs to them and whatever you do with somebody else, then you need their permission. Now, it may be as something as simple as when they take photographs, you know, they're on the iPad and they're taking photos and you say, well, actually, before you take a photograph of somebody, you need to ask their permission. You know, that is consent as well. So you can start from a very young age teaching practices like that so that when they're older, then they understand the importance of things like consent. Now we have a mainly a Sri Lankan audience and I know that in Sri Lanka we tend to teach our daughters about sex and sex education uh, because we're worried that they might get pregnant but it's really really important that you educate your sons as well as your daughters and that your sons know about periods and know about sanitary pads and as well as your daughters and that they both are taught the same thing. And it's also important actually that both parents teach. Now I'm told uh, by moms in Colombo that all of you are women. So, um, you know, that's fine, but it would have been nice for a few men to join us as well, because, um, you know, I can teach my daughter about what it's like to have a period, to have period cramps. It's a bit trickier to teach my son about wet dreams and how it feels like to have an erection. Whereas my husband is more equipped to talk about that. Now, not all of us have the luxury of being able to co-parent, have a um, dad and a mom in our relationship, in which case do your best, but maybe there would be another adult, a female or a male, who will be able to teach your children as well, because it is important for them to hear the point of view from both genders. It's also really important that you talk about sex and sexuality as a gift. It's very special, done between consenting adults, and it's a rewarding part of an adult relationship. Right, there's a lot of inf information there. So now I'm going to break this down into different age groups. Okay, so from 18 months to three years. One thing I just want to talk about is masturbation, okay? So from an early age, children will start touching their bodies. That is completely and totally normal. We have lots of nerve endings on the end of our fingers, on our lips, and in our genital areas, um, far more than, say, other areas, like your arms or your legs. So it's normal that for children and even babies, you know, they touch their penis, they might, girls might touch their vulva or they might rub against something and it feels good. So they carry on doing it and that's fine, you know, but it's important to teach them what they do in public and what they do in private. It's important at this young age that they have correct names for their anatomy and that you teach them um, differences between public, which means things that are not covered by our swimsuit, and private, things that are covered by our swimsuit. Now, we're going to talk about this a lot more in our Preventing Sexual Abuse workshop, so I'm not going to go into that in detail this time. But just to say, curiosity about their own body and other people's body is completely normal. Um, a bit older, between three and four, uh, they become more aware of the differences between boys and girls. They might ask where the babies come from, why can't daddies have babies, and again, short, simple, truthful answers. There are lots and lots of wonderful books out there, which would really help as well. You know, little books, where the babies come from. If you want a list, I'm happy to send it via Mums in Karma to you. Lots available at Vijatiyapa, at Milk, um, you know, and I think that's a really good way to start um, the conversation as well. Again, children may touch their genitals. It's just important to tell them when that's acceptable and when it's not. That means in public and private. A bit older, four to five, very actively interested in other people's bodies, want to know why boys and girls are different, 
Again, okay to touch own genitals, but not anybody else's and not in public. And again, more accurate information. Now, again, where the babies come from, you could, when they're 18 months, you could say they come from a mummy's tummy. At this age, you could say babies have grown in a, in a mummy's womb. And then you could say, and when the baby is ready to come out, mummy pushes, 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 and pushes the baby out. At this age, they don't need to know where the baby comes out from. But just a little start of conversation. And when they get older, you can be more elaborate. So before reaching school age, children really should know the proper names for all their body parts, okay? They need to know the functions of the different body parts. You wouldn't believe the amount of adults I've come across that don't know that they pee from a urethra and not from their vagina, okay? That lots of adults don't even know where their clitoris is. So it's important that either if you feel uncomfortable talking about that, that you give their children books that you can then talk about later on. And, you know, they need to know the differences between boys and girls as well. Ages five to seven, really interesting age. They're learning about how their bodies work. They love talking about farting and pooing and weeing, and it's all really fun. Again, very curious about each other's bodies, pregnancy, childbirth, and you can talk a bit more about it now. You know, um, watching animals give birth on Animal Planet is a great way of, of introducing the subject. And you can see, oh, look, the, the sheep is born and that's coming from the mummy sheep's vagina. So, and the, the sheep was in, the, the, the lamb was in the womb and now it's coming out. So um, talk about it honestly. Between eight and nine is when puberty starts happening especially for girls, maybe not externally, but certainly internally. And this is such an important learn, a stage in their lives. They need to know that their bodies will change. They need to, you need to talk about periods, about how, uh, what to look out for. Again, we're gonna go through all of this in our puberty lecture, okay? So between eight and nine, children start may start puberty, they would ask questions about swear words, gay relationships, transgender people. Again, especially if they're exposed to media, it's really important that you talk honestly with them, always bearing in mind not to be judgmental and not to be negative when you talk about different people's choices. Okay, so a little bit older again, where do babies come from? Why can't daddies have babies? Why do girls have breasts? Why boys have penises? What is sex? These are all questions that my children have asked me and your children are probably going to ask you. Okay, and I'm just gonna give you a three-step model on how to answer these questions. For example, see a six-year-old is there watching a kissing scene on TV and the little girl turns to daddy and says, daddy, they're doing sex. Right, so the first thing you do is you correct the information, misinformation. So you say, or you can ask them, what do you mean by doing sex? That daddy, that, they're doing sex. You say, well, actually, that's not sex. They're just having a kiss. Okay, so it's correcting the misinformation. And then you could use that as a teachable moment. Do you know what it means? when you say the word sex do you know what that means again curious calmly not accusing and you could see what ideas she's got about it and then you could say oh i think she might say i don't know and you could say well i think you're ready for a talk about a very special way that adult people show love for one another and talk about it then and there, or maybe say like, we can go to a bookshop and find some books. But here you are, you've got a teachable moment, you have big and askable parent, and you're being honest. Now, the reaction will be, yuck, that's disgusting. And that's completely normal, you know, and acknowledge that, say, well, I think, you know, you're right. At your age, I thought it was disgusting as too. But when you grow up and you become an adult, it won't be disgusting then. 
um, and you may be able to change your mind. But right now, you're a child, so it's fine for you to think that it's disgusting. You also need to give your values at this point. So you need to say that it's for consenting adults. That means that two people agree to do this act together and always leave the door open for future discussions. So say, well, is there anything else you want to talk to me about? Or if ever you want to talk to me, I'm always here to answer any of your questions. So be open about it. Right, so when they're a bit older, nine to 12, lots of other questions. Ask about periods, about masturbation, orgasm, puberty, wet dreams, acne, you know, so many different questions. Again, be ready to use teachable moments, be an askable parent and be honest. And if you don't know the answers, look it up. When children are older, they might just go ask more detailed questions about contraception, about misinformation, like, oh, you know, you can get AIDS if you kiss. And so it's obvious you need to correct that misinformation. Is it okay to be gay? Is it okay to be lesbian? Yes, absolutely it is. What about an abortion? What's a blowjob? Lots of different questions that you might hear them talk about. You could be watching something on TV and it's important then to talk about it as well. Um, so by the time children reach puberty, again, they need to know what body parts related to sex and their function. They need to know how babies are conceived and born, about puberty, about menstruation, both boys and girls, about masturbation, homosexuality, about all the different genders and the choices of sexuality that people may have. All right, so who should tell? Well, the talk should never be a talk. You know, you can't tell your children, right, today I'm gonna to teach you all about the birds and bees, sit down. It doesn't work like that. It just makes people uncomfortable. It has to be a gradual process. If the talk hasn't happened and they're now, you know, a little bit older, pre-puberty maybe, um, or reaching puberty, then you need to think, right, I need to talk to them. Gradually introduce the subject. Whoever's more comfortable communicating with the child probably should be able to initiate it. Okay, and the key to success is to be open and frank and honest with your communicating uh, communication with your child. So that's the first part of our workshop. I'm sorry that I just ran through it. We had a lot of slides and I know we've got lots and lots of questions coming up. The second part will be puberty, which we will run later on. And then after that will be how to protect your child from sexual abuse. So I'm going to now look at the questions and answer some of them. So if you'd like to post some of the questions, let me just, oh, there are a couple of dads, wonderful. I'm glad, well done dads. <laughs> right, so if you've got any questions, I will answer them now. Oh, you're welcome. Lots of people saying thank you. I'm just. Oh, says looks like people are shy to start asking questions. Okay. Well, um, right, so very good question here. Somebody says, um, how do you think questions about pornography should be approached? That's an excellent question. Uh, we deal more about it in our puberty workshop, but I will talk to you a bit, a bit about it now. Uh, pornography is out there, okay? We can't stop it. Obviously, you know, when your children are young, it is vitally important that you control what um, 
information they can gain from the outside world, which means that if they're on YouTube, you make sure that they are on children's YouTube. You make sure that if they're on your phones, that you've got some sort of parental control that filters any kind of unwanted content. Okay, that is primarily your, it is your job as a parent to keep your child safe from all the information, sexualized information that is out there. But whether you like it or not, pornography is here and it's here to stay, okay? So I think it's important to talk about it. And one way I would approach it is to say, well, it's very degrading to women. It is not the correct way of um, displaying emotions because these people are pretending it's not real. There's lots of things out there in which people are abused and they're doing it because they need the money and they're pretending. And I think it's important to have a conversation about that. And also actually to say that pornography is addictive. Um, I will, you know, I give an example um, that lots of people in previous workshops, uh, I had females come to me, um, Young, young people when I was doing a puberty workshop for young people to say that they don't like the hair in their genitals, um, that they want to shave it off. And be because the boys want them to shave it off because boys have seen pornography and that's what girls look like. You know, so I think it's really important to share that this is not the real world. Again, it just really depends on how you feel about it and your family values but as ch young children, it's really important that you protect them from pornography. All right. Okay, so 11 year old son, how do you tell a child who's so shy when he sees kissing scenes in a movie, it's not a bad thing, how do you um, start a conversation? Again, a very good question. So that is a lovely teachable moment, isn't it? Um, it's interesting that your son would find be, be shy about it. I mean, maybe somebody in the past had said, oh, it's not such a good thing, um, or it's embarrassing. So when you see a kissing scene with your child, you know, you just say, oh, you know what, they're just kissing. It's just very normal. It's how people show that they love each other. Um, adults that are consenting show. And in fact, you know, your dad and I, or your partner, my partner and I, uh, we, we kiss as well, uh, you know, when we show that we love each other. So it's just starting the conversation like that, or maybe, you know, it's important actually for your children to show, to see you showing, giving affection to your partner so that they know that it's just a normal thing. Obviously not a full blown sexual snog in front of them, but it's important that they see that as well. So just say, look, you might be, you might feel a bit embarrassed and that's okay, but that's just completely normal what they're doing. And, you know, they're just kissing. Right, let's look at some, oh, uh, my child is six years old. When do we start talking to him about sex or related ideas? Right, so I've, as I've sort of mentioned in the workshop before, it starts early on, doesn't it? Where you talk about the correct anatomy, for their bodies, you use teachable moments uh, on the TV of animals mating, talking about, yep, they're mating, they're making babies. I think for your child, the best thing would be if you haven't had that opportunity to get a book. Lots of different books called where uh, Moms in Kalama will give you a list. Okay, so where do babies come from um, is, is a really, really good book. Mummy Laid an Egg is a fantastically funny book. Um, Hair in Funny Places is another one talking about puberty. So many books out there. Books are a fantastic resource. And what I did with my children was that I would have these books as part of their bedtime story from the time they were about 18 months old, because there are books from that, those ages onwards and sharing it together as a bedtime story, just like you would share stories on being scared or being worried or climate change. This is just part of it as well. So it's for your six-year-old, that's where I would start. 
When watching a movie together with your eight-year-old, if they show a sex scene, should you allow them to watch or change the channel? Of course they should watch it. I mean, surely your children need to watch programs that are age suitable, okay? There's a fantastic website called Common Sense Media. And when my children were young, whatever film or book or TV program they watched, I would check on Common Sense Media first because it gives an age appropriate rating and that comes from video games as well. And if your child is watching something that's age appropriate, then absolutely there's no need to change the channel because then your child is going to think, well, there's something taboo about this. This is secretive. This is not good. So if your child is watching age appropriate films and in PG films for an eight year old, there's lots of kissing. There could be some sex and that is fine. Use it as a teachable moment. Talk to them about what you see um, in front of them. But another question. Is it possible to give an example on how to approach the topic of masturbation with a 12 year old? Okay, so I mean, at this time, um, you know, you need to assume that you've had conversations like this before, okay? But if they haven't, okay, I mean, one example would be to read a book together. Again, lots of books for 12 year olds uh, talk about masturbation. Or maybe you could see a dog on the road humping somebody and you see, oh, they're humping it. They're stimulating themselves. That's called masturbation. Or in conversation, you could say, you know, um, masturbation is a word for when people, children, adults feel good about themselves when they touch their private parts, for example, their penis or their vulva. It's completely normal, completely natural. You might feel really good at the end and that's called an orgasm, but it's important that you do it in private. So um, it's important to talk about it, definitely. Um, okay, eight-year-old daughter, how do we discuss details about sex, penetrating, sperm meeting, egg. She's very curious about baby formed inside tummy. So that's great, isn't it? How wonderful. I would start off first, definitely with getting a book. Okay, lots of books out there, as I said before. And then, you know, you, you talk it in a very simple term. So you say, when mummies and daddies love each other very much, they do a special kind of hugging that adults do, where that the, the penis goes into the vagina. So you obviously you've talked about the words beforehand and uh, there's a special liquid called sperm that goes from the penis into the vagina, into the womb. And there it meets a tiny little egg that the, the woman has released or mommy has released and they get together and a baby is made and the baby grows in this lovely little, in the womb, grows bigger and bigger and bigger. And when it's time to come out, mommy will squeeze and squeeze and push and push and the baby comes out of the vagina. So, you know, very simple, very honest and try and talk about it. But the easiest way to do it is if you have a book to, to read with them. Um, Okay, how do you start explaining what a vagina is to eight year old in a way she wants to try to play around with it? Well, why would you want your eight year old not to play with her vagina? I mean, that's just normal for children to explore their anatomy, to masturbate, to make themselves feel better. That's just normal. So, you know, if you find that your child is, is touching herself there, you just say that's just normal. It's called masturbation. Everybody does it, but you need to do it privately. And you don't make them feel embarrassed or ashamed of what they want to do. And explaining a vagina, you know, you could just say, well, the outside, obviously, maybe when she's having a shower, you could talk about, you know, the outside is the vulva and the little tube that goes into the womb is called a vagina. Uh, 12 year old son, how do you approach the subject of masturbation? So again, 
very easy, lots of books out there for puberty, uh, which talks about masturbation. And again, you say completely normal, very natural, everybody does it and uh, just do it privately, okay? So many questions, okay, quite a few of them are the similar. So I'm not going to um, answer all of them because I've sort of done that already, hold on. At what age do you think it's okay to talk about what gay means? Okay, so if your child asks you what is gay, then you need to ask, answer them honestly. It doesn't matter what age it is. You just say, in some people, you know, men and women love each other. In gay relationship, it means two men love each other or two women love each other. It's very simple. You know, children have a very unbiased, unprejudiced world. And it's us adults that add these prejudices into them. So, you know, it's, if they ask what gay means, you say it. If you can see a program, for example, Modern Family is an amazing, fantastic program uh, to watch with your children. And, you know, and there's a gay couple there. And so it's just out there and you just talk about it. How do you really talk about the act of sex with a seven-year-old? Okay, so again, books are great, okay, and just like I explained to you before, you know, you discuss it with a book. You could talk about doing is watching animals uh, on Animal Planet and say they're mating, making babies. And then you talk more if they want to know more questions. You could even say, okay, so, you know, there's these two giraffes and they're mating. So the male giraffe is going to put his penis into the female's vagina. Okay, quite simple. And then, you know, if he wants to know about men and women, again, from a book, read about it together. And that's how you talk about it. Um, so it's 11.30 now. Okay, so hold on. How to tackle questions about private part discussions coming from outsiders? Not quite sure what that question means. Could you elaborate questions about private part discussions coming from outsiders? I'm not quite sure what outsiders mean. If you could answer ask me again, that'd be great. <laughs> Okay, well, I think that's, uh, okay. Well, I thank you very, very much for joining us. Um, I hope it was helpful for you and informative. Um, I'm always there to answer questions either through Moms in Colombo. Um, we will decide if you want to share this uh, sort of recording or not on a later date. And we will be running puberty workshop and how to protect your children from sexual abuse workshops as well. And we look forward to seeing you there. Okay, thanks very much. You're welcome, bye-bye.